The spirit of Wes Montgomery and that composition called The Thumb, an important uh, symbol in the life and music of Wes Montgomery. The interpreter here is Joshua Breakstone, guitar, with his colleagues Jimmy Neppert, trombone, Tommy Flanagan, piano, Dave Shapiro, bass, Keith Copeland, drums. It's intermission at the artist quarter now, and uh, just off stand is Joshua Breakstone, the man behind that uh, symbol of the thumb. Welcome in. How are you this evening? I'm fine, Lee. Thank you for having on, me on. It's, a, it's an honor to be on with you. Well, th- thank you for joining us uh, in those brief intermissions. I know that's a time to sort of uh, recharge the batteries, so we appreciate you taking time out to share some thoughts with us. You know, it, it occurs to me, and I, I, I just heard this in a conversation, the Village Vanguard was really sort of an academic setting for you, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, that's a funny kind of story. Well, it was about the only place I could get in, uh, slightly underage, slightly stretching the rules. Uh, that was when I was in high school, and I used to leave school at about 5 o'clock and get over to the Vanguard about, oh, I'd say about an hour or maybe an hour and a half after that. Where was the school? In what uh, state? It was in New Jersey. I see. So you had to come across the Hudson River. I'd take the train over and uh, managed to get myself down to the Vanguard and get in there when they'd be cleaning up from the night before. Uh, always get the front table, though. <laughs> and uh, got to hear a lot, of, a lot of great people, but not for very long, because uh, when, when the music would start at 10, I would have to get going, I believe it was a little before 11 o'clock. So many nights I only caught one or two tunes, but uh, it was almost like a... Oh, it was just a great experience for me at that age to even be there, even if I didn't hear any music, just seeing the musicians walking in and being, you know, two or three feet away from people like Elvin Jones and, you know, George Coleman and Sonny Stitt and, you know, on and on and on. It it was really uh, exciting for me then. About how old were you? Uh, I must have been about, uh, about 15. Were you playing guitar then? I guess I just started playing. And uh, I quickly uh, steeped myself in as much music as I possibly could, and that was one of my only uh, ways to do it over at the Vanguard. What other uh, what other resources did you discover and work with? Well, I mean, I did a lot of listening, probably like most kids that start out uh, with an interest uh, in jazz at that age. And uh, the only other club that I really got into... Um, at that time was uh, was Bradley's, where Barry Harris was playing Sundays for, for a number of years. So I used to get in there on occasion, although I'd get proofed and thrown out. Um, some other <laughs> venues for jazz um, around the New York area are um, an institution, uh, the Jazz Mobile, where you can hear jazz performed publicly around the city, and it goes to New Jersey and the five boroughs. So that was another opportunity that I had to to hear some music. How about just the pure learning aspect of it and the true academic study that is under some sort of discipline? Uh, well, I I was very, very lucky to uh, manage to find Sal Salvador, who's a very well-known guitarist. Worked with Stan Kenton. Right. And uh, as excellent a guitarist as Sal is... Um, He's just, his, his reputation, I think, in my eyes, is made due to his teaching, because I think he is just one of the greatest guitar teachers ever. And uh, he helped me quite a bit. So I, it was very, very fortunate that I, that I managed to, uh, to find Sal. Who do you classify, uh, Joshua Breakstone, among great jazz improvisers? Well, I have to. When you talk about improvisation, I think you got to start with Charlie Parker. Um, I believe that he pretty much developed the language that uh, everybody else has um, taken off from, has has either maybe refined or uh, sort of molded in uh, their own ways. Uh, so I, I think the thing started with Bird, but of course there's all kinds of other people, such as you know Cannonball Latterly is. A great one, and uh, Clifford Brown, and on the guitar another unique one. People like Grant Green or or Kenny Burrell. 
Uh, but I think it's, it starts and ends with Charlie Parker. Well, if you were to uh, describe for us who are laymen and laywomen, uh, what is the difference between, or how do you distinguish between the craft of improvisation and the art of playing jazz, as you do? Oh, well, uh, as you know, and I'm sure your listeners are aware, there is uh, quite a number of years of serious study that go into being able to uh, perform the mechanics which are involved in improvisation. Um, it's not an easy task. Uh, you have to become very, very familiar with uh, all the technical rigors of your instrument, of course, and you have to be thoroughly aware of the music and the songs, and there are many, many. Um, you have to uh, be able to develop melodies over any sort of song. So all of this stuff is very, very technically demanding. Um, that's all technical sort of stuff. Now, when the, where the art comes in is using all of that to express oneself, you see, and uh, that's, what everybody's, that's what everybody out here really should be keeping an eye on, on doing is, uh, you know, expression. That's that's what music is about for me anyway. So we use the technical side to get to the to the art side, to the expression side. Do you like to uh, think in terms of visual art uh, when you think about music? Well, I mean, I I guess I have been uh, more and more um, getting into visual art. I don't I don't think of it in terms of um, my own playing. I mean, I know some people can for instance, look at a painting and then play something that is sort of expressive of that particular piece. But, um, you know, I can definitely see a, a similarity between um, the expressiveness that certain painters use, the power, you know, the emotion that comes through in their work. So there, I, I would say in that certain sense, in terms of those sorts of emotions that come through in different arts, you know, there's a similarity between all arts, really. Well, it's a pleasure to uh, sit in and talk uh, so briefly with you, and I know that you're almost due back on stand. Perhaps we can talk with you again soon. Okay, that'd be great, Lee. Joshua Breakstone, thank you so much for talking with us, and uh, we'll return you to the stage of the Artist Quarter in Minneapolis, Minnesota, at 26th and Nicollet, while we head for Rudy Van Gelder's studios in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, and your love for melody. <laughs> 